So the final version of iOS 14.4 was released today to the public, which is great, right? Because it brings with it a whole new swath of features that we're gonna talk about in this video. So if you're already running the iOS 14.4 release candidate, then you're good because they're the same build number. So you're actually not going to get an OTA update for this final version of 14.4. They're exactly the same. There are lots of bug fixes in 14.4, including a fix for image artifacts that could appear in HDR photos. Now, some people have also complained about stuttering that appears when going back to the home screen. I haven't experienced that personally, but what have you experienced? Let me know down below in the comment section. But now let's talk about what's new in iOS 14.4. So first and foremost, you get a new perspective zoom parameter when adding a set wallpaper action in the shortcuts app. So of course, the set wallpaper action came back in iOS 14.3, and that's really useful for creating dynamic wallpaper like this. Let me show you, give it a second, and you'll see that wallpaper change just like that whenever I charge my iPhone. And I have a tutorial that shows you how to do this. If you're interested in learning how to do it, be sure to follow the tutorial linked here. But in iOS 14.4, there is a new parameter for the set wallpaper action, and that parameter is none other than perspective zoom. So this allows you to toggle on or off the parallax effect whenever using the set wallpaper action. So I can turn that on, which will enable the parallax effect whenever I set wallpaper using the random wallpaper shortcut that I created. So I just manually enacted that shortcut here. You can see it took effect and that parallax wallpaper is now available. And you can see the parallax effect a little bit here. This wallpaper was set using the set wallpaper action. It's a subtle, but nonetheless useful new feature in iOS 14.4. Now iOS 14.4 also features notifications for when your camera on your iPhone is unable to be verified as a new genuine Apple camera in all iPhone 12 models. It doesn't appear to affect your using the camera, but you will get a notification. And in iOS 14.4, there is support for reading smaller QR codes within the camera app. So you know, the stock camera app has the ability to read QR codes natively. Of course, you can go in and toggle that functionality within the settings app, you'll see a scan QR code switch that you can enable or disable. But basically in iOS 14.4, the stock camera app will be able to recognize smaller QR codes. So whereas the previous version of iOS had a tougher time reading those smaller QR codes. Now that is no longer an issue here on iOS 14.4. You can compare them because here on my iPhone 12 mini, I'm running an older version of iOS and you see I have to get a little bit closer before that QR code is recognized. A lot closer actually. There we go. Whereas on iOS 14.4, I can be further away. Therefore the QR code is smaller and it's still able to scan that with no issue. And if you use exposure notifications and you have an active region added, you'll notice a new feature to automatically notify others when you have a positive COVID test. So here's that automatically notify others. And this allows for public health authorities to ask you for one-time access to your random IDs. And if you are diagnosed with COVID-19, this will allow those health authorities to automatically notify others and you won't be identified via the notifications because it's all anonymous. So you don't have to worry about that, but it's pretty cool because that to me just makes the system work that much better and helping people stay alerted if they may have encountered someone with COVID-19. And another new feature that you'll find in iOS 14.4 is the ability to set the Bluetooth device type. Now, when you go into Bluetooth settings, you'll see the little I button next to each Bluetooth device. For instance, this right here is my car stereo. So if I tap the little I next to it, you're going to see the ability to set device type. This is a new feature in iOS 14.4 and Apple explains why they included this feature once you go into that particular parameter within the settings app. So you'll notice for device type, there are several different types of devices that you can assign to the various Bluetooth devices that you are connected to. So you have, for instance, car stereo, which in this case is accurate. This is a car stereo, but you also have headphones, you have hearing aid, speaker, and other. And as you see at the bottom, specifying the type of device can ensure that your headphone audio level measurements are accurate. So 
if you connect to a device like a, a Bluetooth speaker and it misidentifies it as a pair of headphones, then it's going to mess with the volume levels in a way that just isn't very desirable. Maybe adjusting the volume to a lower level when you actually want it to be loud because it's a speaker. Or maybe you have a car stereo that's misrepresented as a pair of headphones as well and it'll, you know, go in and mess with the volume. Those are all super annoying scenarios. This will help fix that going forward by being able to automatically assign device type. Unlike Apple's own devices like AirPods Pro, for instance, where Apple knows these are headphones, other devices, it isn't so smart. So this gives the user a little bit of control to assign specific device types to Bluetooth connections. Super handy new feature in 14.4. Now this next feature is assuming you have an Apple Watch with watchOS 7.3, which was also just released. You get a new watch face, which is called the Unity watch face. You can find that within the face gallery. And of course, you'll also find that on the Apple Watch itself. And like I said, you need to be running watchOS 7.3. And in 14.4, you'll find a new tab for find my items within the find my app. Now, in order to see this, you have to have Xcode downloaded on your Mac and you connect your, your iPhone to your Mac and that enables the developer panel within the settings app. So here under developer, you're going to find a setting to enable the find my items tab within the find my app. So let's go ahead and go into the developer panel here under settings and I'll show you where to find that. Just scroll all the way down here and there you go, display items tab. And with this switch enabled, the items tab will be shown within the Find My app and you'll be able to pair Find My compatible accessories. This presumably will include the upcoming Air Tags from Apple along with other third-party tracking devices from companies like Tile. So let's go into the Find My app and look what you have there. Right off the bat, you see the items tab that helps you keep track of your everyday items via things like Air Tags, which aren't launched yet, but presumably will be launched sometime in the near future. Like I said, this will work with third-party compatible devices as well. So all you would have to do here is tap on add item, and then you'll see an interface for adding accessories or other items that are compatible with Find My. So I'll do that now. And then you see searching items, and it tells you to follow the instructions provided by the manufacturer to make your item discoverable. With AirTags, I imagine this would be extremely simple, extremely easy to do. I personally cannot wait for the AirTags. It seems like we've been waiting forever. Will you be buying the AirTags when they come out? What type of things do you plan on attaching your AirTags to? Let me know down below in the comments section. Now, another cool thing is that if you actually find a lost item, you'll be able to use the Find My app to see if the owner left a message by connecting to it. So that's what you see right here. So for instance, maybe I leave a message that says, call me at this number if you find my item. Pretty cool. And finally, we have the updated HomePod mini handoff experience that is courtesy of iOS 14.4. And this new handoff experience works with any U1 ultra wideband enabled iPhone that includes the iPhone 11 and iPhone 12. So as you move closer to your HomePod mini, the U1 chips in each device communicate to gain spatial awareness of each other. So as you move closer, you'll feel more haptic feedback. It'll get a lot stronger. And eventually that little notification at the top will pop into a full screen view automatically when you get close enough to your HomePod mini. But in this case, I can just tap on the notification there to open up in full screen view, which gives you additional options. So at the top of this interface, you see the color of your HomePod, the name of the HomePod, whether it's playing or not. You see a transfer button that allows you to transfer to or from your iPhone. You see the album artwork of the song loaded on your HomePod including its source. And of course you see transport controls as well. So if I tap transfer from iPhone, that transfers the song that I'm playing on my iPhone right over to the HomePod mini and it just starts playing on the HomePod mini. Pretty simple stuff there. And here's what happens when you get it really close, it automatically pops that screen into view. So you don't have to tap on that notification it does it automatically. Now, the cool thing is that you don't even have to unlock your phone. You see, I have the face ID sensor covered, the phone is still locked, yet I can still interact and control the uh, playback controls on my HomePod mini. And of course I have playback controls as well, right there on the lock screen. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a look at some of the top features for iOS 14.4. What's your favorite new feature? Let me know down below in the comment section and subscribe for more videos like this.
This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac.